David Edwards um, with the team, uh, Joel Bisnath, Dempsey Tillman, and Anil Ramkalawan. And this one, very close to my heart, aerial drone to harvest mangoes. And I think this is very, very timely looking at my mango tree right now. So let's see what David has to say. And I believe David is online for a couple of questions afterwards. Good day to everyone. And it is with pleasure that I present the abstract for the paper entitled, An Aerial Drone to Harvest Mangoes. This was done by Dr. Jarrell Bisnath, Mr. Dempsey Stillman, myself, Mr. David Edwards, and Dr. Anil Ramkalawan. We are from the Design and Manufacturing Systems Department in the University of Trinidad and Tobago. According to Infocom's commodity profile on the mango in 2016, they show that in 2013, over 43 million tons of mango were produced. Also, in an article entitled Overview Global Mango Market in 2018, estimated a global trade of 1.8 million tons in 2017. This is a chart taken from statista.com showing the trend of mango production worldwide from 2000 to 2017. It shows a steady increase over 17 years. And because of this data, it was deemed necessary to look at the methods of harvesting with a focus on the risks of harvesting. The height of a mango tree is usually between 10 meters to 40 meters long. There are grafted mango trees available on the market. However, due to the long lifespan of mango trees, there will still be a risk involved in harvesting mangoes. The methods used for picking mangoes are using poles with cutting implements attached, using hydraulic lifts if the fruits are out of reach, and also climbing the mango tree. All these methods pose risks of injury to persons that are harvesting. Mango trees are common in residential properties in Trinidad and Tobago, and persons who want to harvest for personal use will be exposed to these risks. This brings us to the objectives of this research, which is to mitigate the high risks involved in harvesting mangoes. And to do this, we utilize a drone. This is the final design of the drone. The drone itself was bought and assembled. However, the fittings that fitted the cutting mechanism together to the drone were 3D printed. The cutting implement here is attached and it's being controlled by a stainless steel fishing wire attached to a servo that is on the drone itself. In the following slide, you'll see the actual cutting mechanism explained. This is a diagram showing the cutting mechanism used in the drone. This here is the cutting implement, which is attached by a aluminum rod. And at, the, at this point of the cutting implement, as you can see, there's this line that is a 30 kilogram rated stainless steel fishing wire, which is attached to the cutting implement. And this is controlled by a servo, which pulls. So the transmitter will send a signal to the servo and it will pull on this stainless steel wire and as a result it will sever the peduncle of the mango. There was also a first person viewer or FPV camera attached to the drone that was pointed in the direction of this cutting implement and this is to ensure that the peduncle of the mango would be severed at the precise location. This video shows the different phases of testing of the drone. The first phase 
involved testing to see if the drone could lift its own weight. Next, the pitch, yaw, and roll commands of the transmitter was tested. Next, the PID gains had to be adjusted for better response. Once the desired gains were achieved, stable flight was then tested. Next, the cutting implement was attached to the drone. Stabilization, altitude hole, and GPS mode was then tested. However, it is during this test that two of the motors at the front of the drone eventually gave out due to extensive testing. The final test phase what had to be done was that the drone needed to sever a bottle that was hanging from the tree. However, because of the two motors that were burnt at the front, it had to be replaced with other motors, but these motors were not of the same make as the other motors on the drone. And that resulted in unstable flight. For more information on the avionics, telemetry, aircraft navigation system, communication systems, or other technical specifications, please feel free to contact Demsys Thilman at yahoo.com. Thank you. All right. That's that was an, uh, a very good um, presentation there. Uh, any of the authors online right now? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So, uh, who do we have here, David? Yes, it's okay, me and uh, Dr. Jarrell Business. I think it's all right. Great, great, great. great. All right, good. Um, all right, so I, I like the, the fact that you, you want to do something indigenous, right? Uh, but I, I saw that your, your method of testing, uh, did you use any uh, simulator or simulations to guide your design and initial testing? Um, all right, so I'll take that one, yeah. Um, so no. Of the aerodynamic models I was involved it was thought that a proof of concept approach would have been easier to, to deal with this problem. Uh, the rel for, it was making good progress up until the point where we had the hardware failure and it was really due down to the specifications of the motors probably not being what was published in that mm -hmm. case. Okay, all right. Um, uh, uh, Dr. King has a, a question. All right, um, did the motors burn out due to the additional load of the drone from the cutting tool? Yes. Yes, actually. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Because and if, if you the... had simulated it beforehand, you would have seen that too, right? Yeah. Well, the thing about it is that the rating, what was um, 
expected from the design in terms of the throttle position to maintain stable flight. If we had compared the rated value to what was actually observed, we would have seen that um, the ratings were not matching up. So we suspected that it might have been some manufacturer fault as well. Okay, all right, not a problem. Um, okay, the, the, I have one concern, right? Um, I, I really, really like the idea, right? I myself, I love mangoes and I wish that I could get something to, uh, um, to, to pick them easily. But uh, I was thinking, uh, is it a, a truly a practical design? Because what about um, avoiding the branches? Uh, do, do you have a, a branch of the mechanism? Yes, yeah, so um, initially with the design, um, it was supposed to have a mesh, like a wire mesh at the top. And that's supposed to prevent the branches from like sticking into the propeller. But that was actually too heavy, right? So um, we kind of just played on the advantage of the actual way that the mango bears its fruit which is on the periphery. So the drone doesn't really need to fly into the branches per se, but it would take the, um, the mangoes at the extremities. Okay, all right. So, so not, nothing really for the, those mangoes on the, on the inner portion of the, of the tree, really? No, but, but what was recommended is um, with the actual, the mesh that was supposed to be implemented, um, what we decided is that you know, next time, you know, we would use a, a octocopter, octocopter instead. So you'll get more thrust. Right. Okay. Okay. And yeah, and, and I, I'm guessing that um, what I would have liked to, to see in, in the design too is, um, you know, all, all of the, the different types of, you know, uh, octocopters and quadcopters and, um, you know, the, the, the amount of force that that um, they can fly with and, and and so on, right? That could have uh, influenced your design, uh, you know. And then you know the, the fact that we have branches and so on, you know, uh, in something a little bit smaller, you know, could have done the trick. Um, yeah, but I, I I think it's a good start though, right? Um, uh, you all have any other comments to make? Well, <clears throat> this was one of the well, the first foray into it, but of course the idea really is to couple this now with swarm technology and really downsize all the components so that smaller drones might be able to man maneuver within trees more readily. But like David was alluding to, most of the mangoes actually be, um, come out on the periphery of the tree. But in the eventual aim of the research is to have a swarm of these smaller drones that could probably go out and identify which fruit should be harvested and of course take it from there. All right. Um, uh, we have a, a, a question online here. All right. Nice idea. Have you considered the mangoes getting damaged after being cut by the drone? Uh, is it going to just fall onto the ground? Okay. Um, well, Let's, yeah, go ahead, David. All right. Yeah. So what was um, the initial thought is to have a net in place at the bottom. But what, what also would, would help the process is that um, what was implemented was a first person viewer camera. So the peduncle of the mango was actually, well, you have to cut the peduncle of the mango at a particular height, because if you cut it too low, you know, um, that could cause the, I think it's the sap to, um, to come out and then that would damage the mango itself. So you have to actually cut it at a particular height. So the net would prevent it from, I guess, dropping on the ground and bruising. And the first person viewer camera would, you know, help the flyer or the pilot to cut it at the right position. Right. Did, did you do any sort of um, accuracy tests on on that aspect of it? On the like the first person cutting, first person uh, camera and the, the the cutting of the mango. Yes. No. So, was, oh? Well, no, it it didn't get to that point. We were concentrating more on tuning the drone in this instance, and there will be some learning curve to the operator right now. So it would be of course eliminated with more experience of the operator. While we did have the video telemetry in place, we didn't get a chance to actually test to see how difficult it would be to maneuver up to a real tree. Okay. All right, great. I, I think um, you actually have a, a pretty good start. I, I would like to encourage you all to continue, right? Uh, you know, besides mango, uh, another another fruit that that um, we, we like is uh, coconut, right? <laughs> And you know, you, you all could find something to cut branches of coconuts. 
right? Um, uh, or the you know the actual crop of it. Um, that that will be uh, quite useful as well. Um, yeah. So this is an excellent start. We look forward to uh, improvements in the future. Sure. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Okay. All right. Good.